how do you lubricate a compressor? And remember, a compressor is a device that does work on a fluid, and it basically increases the, the pressure or the density of the fluid, right? So kind of like the opposite of a turbine, where a turbine extracts work from the fluid, in a compressor we're doing work on the fluid. And if you remember, there is two broad categories of compressors. You've got dynamic and positive displacement compressors, where dy dynamic compressors kind of accelerate the flow velocity, and then positive displacement compressors, um, you know, close up the space that's available to the gas. In rough terms, that's, that's sort of what they do. And of course, there are variations on the positive displacement compressors as well. Now, the thing about it is that what's unusual about compressors is there are so many different types. So for, so for example, if we were talking about an engine application, most engines look roughly the same in so much as there is a crankshaft, you have bearings, you have cylinders and liners, you have pistons. Now, the nature of the combustion might be a little bit different, whether it's you know, petrol or diesel or different types of diesel or even gas, but fundamentally the mechanics are the same. With compressors, we have completely different machines. I mean, a, a vane uh, positive displacement compressor versus a centrifugal uh, compressor looks very different to a reciprocating compressor, right? Uh, not only that, but you also have the different gas types. So we can uh, compress pure oxygen, we can compress natural gas, we can compress chlorine, we can compress refrigerants. So there's so much variability uh, across the different comp compressor families. So how do we rationalize this? How do we say um, that there is going to be a way to lubricate compressors? We need a simplified model for compressor lubrication. So going back to our Strybeck curve, which is the foundation of most of tribology, remember that we have three different lubrication regimes. You've got boundary, you've got mixed, and hydrodynamic lubrication. Now, hydrodynamic, you can probably split into hydrodynamic and elastohydrodynamic. But fundamentally, we want to use these paradigms to help us understand the different requirements from the compressor. Now, not, not only do we have specific lubrication regimes, but we only have a select number of different machine types. So you've got cams, gears, chain drives, turnbuckles, slideways, plane bearings, thrust bearings, and rolling element bearings. Right? Now, I like to, whenever I encounter a mechanical system, try and break up the system into these eight different components because each of them really exists within a couple of these uh, lubrication regimes and basically what I'm saying is that, that purple is kind of more of a, a rolling versus orange being more of a sliding uh, sort of uh, motion. Right. Now, let's think about compressors. Well, we can eliminate a few of these mechanical devices because we don't really have too many chain drives or turnbuckles, right? So we can start to get rid of some of these, right? Um, and now what we're left with is gears, slideways, plane, thrust, and rolling element bearings. Now, there's not that many gears, right, in, in most compressors. However, we do have, for example, in the case of some uh, large centrifugal compressors, integrally uh, geared systems. So the example that I'm showing here, typically it's, it's one uh, drive shaft that is actually um, rotating all three of the, the centrifuges, but they might have to operate at different speeds. And so there's an ge internal gearbox which helps manage the speeds, right? Now, okay, let's say, for example, we have slideways, plane bearings, thrust bearings, rolling element bearings, as well as gears. Well, now we can start to build up a little bit of a framework for what are the requirements. Now, one of the questions that you might have is you might say, well, hold up, slideway. I'm not aware of any kind of slideway inside a compressor. Now, remember, we're trying to break these things down into its simplest components. So a slideway, remember, is anything that basically is a kind of a linear bearing. And although there might not at first thought be any linear bearings inside a compressor, when you think of a reciprocating compressor, which has a piston inside of a liner, that's going from stationary it accelerates and then it decelerates to zero and then it accelerates and then decelerates to zero. So it is effectively a linear bearing, which makes it a slideway. So it operates like a slideway, right? So now what we can think of is within all of our different compressors, we can break them down into their components. So let's say, for example, if I have an oil flooded rotary screw compressor, what am I ultimately actually lubricating? It's basically the bearings. I also need to have the correct viscosity so that I 
I have a, a, a gas seal, right? Because the lubricant generally acts as a gas seal in, in those rotary compressors. But what am I actually protecting? It's the bearings. When I think of a reciprocating pr compressor, what am I actually trying to pr uh, protect? Well, just like in the case of an internal combustion engine, I'm mainly trying to protect the crankcase bearings as well as the slideway. So again, we can use this framework to think about the different components that are inside the compressor and that can help us understand it. Then we also need to consider the chemistry of it, right? So remember that broadly speaking, you know, as we go down this list, we have, we start with a base oil and then generally when we are formulating industrial lubricants, we add rust and oxidation inhibitors. And then if necessary, we add anti-wear agents and then we add EP agents if necessary. And then we add the detergents again, if they're necessary. As you go from the top to the bottom, you're going from lesser to more additized. And broadly speaking, you know, what you're going from is a heat transfer oil. And then as you go down to the list, you're starting to get closer and closer to an engine oil. Now, in the compressor application, we don't have those kind of contaminants that we see in an internal combustion engine. So we don't need detergents. Generally, we don't have that kind of stop, start and shock loading that we would see in some gearboxes. So we can eliminate most of the EP additives. We might need some light amount of anti-wear. Let's say, for example, if it's an integrated gear, um, or we might want to, to have a little bit of anti-wear um, to assist with um, you know, boundary lubrication. But the anti-wear will be pretty light, and most of the additives will just be rust and oxidation inhibitors. So hopefully, by putting all of this together, you can get a picture for um, how a, a compressor oil uh, or how a compressor would be lubricated.